Hello, welcome to Art Online with Chrysalis. My name is Jenny McConnell. Today you will need paper or your art journal, a brush, watercolours and a lead pencil. We are looking at an African elephant and as you can see we can see some patterns down his trunk. The first shape of this elephant is looking at his head and his trunk. It looks a little bit like a guitar shape. So we'll concentrate on that first. As usual, I like to have a printout of the picture. And I'm just drawing the top of the head, following in and out, like a little bit of a guitar head there, just here where the tusks are, and then coming down here for the trunk. So take your time. You can always pause this video and go back and use your eraser. And then I'm going to work on his ears next. So here we go, we're just doing one ear first already. And I want the other one to match it. Whoops, I ran out of a little bit of room, never mind. And next I'm going to draw in the legs. You can only see three legs and one of them's really hiding behind his tusk there and his trunk. Just some fun facts about elephants. Elephants are the largest land mammals. Wild elephants live in families called herds. Herds are only made up of female elephants and only male elephants are the young calves. Interesting, isn't it? So I just finished doing the eyes and the tusk and I wanna leave those tusks white. And now I'm coming in doing that left, the elephant's left leg. And I've just finished doing the right leg as well. And now I'm doing that back leg just in here. I know I sped things up here with the drawing. So just remember that you can always go back and pause and go back and um, try again. So I'm looking at this picture. I just want to show you that there is a lot of sunlight on the elephant. When we're doing sunlight or white parts of the elephant, we need to remember to leave the paper white when we're doing watercolour. When using watercolour, we want to use a lot of water, not too dark. So therefore, we need to keep adding water until we have it quite diluted. It's really important to start off really light first by using very little paint and lots of water. That way we can always come back and make it darker, but it's almost impossible to do it the other way around. It's impossible to start dark and then go lighter. So we always start very light colors, diluting it with water. And here I'm filling in just the dark parts in the elephant where all the shadows are. So we wanna keep where, where the sunlight's hitting the elephant. We wanna keep the paper white and light and where the darkened shadows are, we want to come in and do it darker. So here I'm just adding more pigment to make it even darker, just so that we can have light and dark blues. So the more water you add to your paint, the lighter it will be, and the less water you add, like I'm going straight from the palette here, the darker it will be. So here I'm doing in some of those wrinkles and lines in his ears. So I'm coming in quite dark on this side because the elephant on the other side is quite dark. And I'm using some purples as well. So I really wanted to mix this up and make it a bit of an abstract piece. So, and add a lot of different colors. So I'm adding purple and I'll be adding greens and oranges and yellows as well. But I'm just picking up on all the dark parts of the elephant and you can follow along with me or you can do your own style it's com art is completely independent of each other and individual remember to keep the tusks completely free from all paint because i want my tusks to be white so i'm being very careful i did go over it a little bit but i want to keep the tusks white so i paint around the tusks and now I'm adding some browns, light browns, um, and different, different colored purples and blues to make it really interesting. And now I'm doing the patterns on the trunk. They're just little lines that go all the way down. 
lots of little patterns. I'm putting in some pinky red, like a magenta color. And I'm trying to dribble some water to make it more abstract, but it didn't really quite work the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to use a tissue and dab. I actually like using tissues and paper towels too to dab on my watercolor because you can have some really interesting spotted effects, interesting texture. I'm just going to put in a little tail in here. I know there isn't one in the picture, but I want to add a tail. So here I'm just experimenting with some mixing some colors. I want to get a light green, so I'm adding yellow to my dark green here to get a really light green. And I want to put some of the light greeny yellow here where the sun, where the elephant's got sunlight hitting, hitting it on the legs. And um, I want to balance my colors up. So where I add yellow on one side, I might add a little bit of yellow on the other. Uh, here I'm just putting in more darks and shadows with his foot and leg. With his trunk I'm just, I created a little teal colour by adding some of my green and my dark blue together. I've got this interesting teal with the patterns on his trunk. Just really working on lights and darks now, light and dark contrast, because his trunk is in the dark here, but it's down the bottom, but it's lighter up the top. So again, I'm being very careful not to add too much dark colors because of so much sunlight hitting his body, his face especially. I want to keep that white, but I want the contrast of the darkness behind him so that the tusks really show up white. And the way to do that is to outline his tusks with a dark color. So I add a little bit of that red magenta to some brown to get this dusty brown look. So when you mix colors with um, watercolor, it's important to have a palette and just have a play around. Um, mostly with my art, I'm always experimenting. So just did a little light brown here by adding lots of water to, on my palette to lighten up those colors. When I use color, I often always try and think about balancing colors. So if I've got brown up the top where his head is, I also want to try and add a little bit of brown down the bottom on his leg somewhere. Um, there's no rules here. I just, just decided for myself that if I'm going to add a bit of green on this side, then I'll add a bit of green on that side. It doesn't have to be matching exactly. It's sometimes more interesting just to have a tiny bit of green on one side and then a lot more green on the other side. But... It's nice also for the eye to see a balance somewhere else. And now all I'm doing is just fiddling around and adding more darker colors. So this is layering. So when, as your um, painting dries, it's really f great for the eye to see layers um, that adds depth. So if I've got one layer of blue and then I come in later and do another layer of blue, um, it shows up when your painting's finished that there are layers. Um, if you look closely, you can see blue over brown, and this adds depth and um, three dimensional looks as well. Like acrylic painting, watercolour also needs layers to create that depth that I was talking about. So I'm coming in now and going over even more. The darker areas of the elephant where the shadows are I'm coming in even darker i started off really really light which is really important for watercolors 
it's very different than working with acrylics. Um, I'm also using a tissue to press down and lift that colour back up again, which is a, makes it very interesting using lots of texture. But I'm coming in here now with extra shadows. So that means I'm not using as much water on my palette. I'm going straight to the paint with a tiny bit of water already sitting in that palette. But this is how I get um, dark on my brush and adding dark to my painting. I just start to see that it starts to really form and things start to really stand out the darker I go. But it's really important to think about layers. I'm just adding some grass at the bottom using light and dark green. I'm just using light green now by I, I added yellow to my green to make the light green and then quite a bit of water that also keeps everything light. I wasn't going to add a bird but since I've got so much space up here I think I'll add a bird. I'm not going to bother trying to draw it in first I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> and I'm flicking some paint. I've got paint on my brush and you can use a toothbrush instead if you want to. And I'm just flicking some colours like the reds and the greens on the bottom. This is kind of fun and it makes it more abstract but also gives it a really interesting look. And uh, This is the abstract part as well that I really enjoy. I love abstract art. I could have left my elephant the way it was, but I decided to um, outline a lot of bits and pieces. Not every single piece, but outline with a Sharpie pen. This is a really fine tip Sharpie. And it just makes things stand out even more. I see a lot of people use a black Sharpie pen to outline with watercolor, and it does have a really effective look. And that concludes our lesson on doing an elephant in watercolour. And what we covered was besides some pattern work on his trunk, we also did anchor shapes to help us draw the elephant. We also did layering colours with watercolour from lights to dark. And we used a couple of abstract techniques with splattering. I hope you enjoyed this art tutorial. And you'll come back and see us again soon. Bye for now.